Greg Sabal, Ain't Got Love, Juno nominee. Greg, come on down. <laughs> what a fantastic job you did there. Thank you so much. Now, it, it's so interesting looking at musicians, the way you, your spirit, the way you get into the art of what you're doing. Yeah, I, I think it just comes naturally. Um, I, I uh, grew up in a really musical home, and, and uh, I think it was kind of in my veins. My, my parents both played music, and, and uh, it just kind of rubbed off, and sang in church, and yeah, it just, uh, it's, it's in my blood, so can't really help it. <laughs> but to be performing publicly at the age of four? Well, that was a wedding, so I mean, it, I, I, it was a relative's wedding too, so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a paying gig. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just loved music ever since I was a little kid, and uh, wherever I could sing, whether it was in, in church or um, in a talent show, in a mall, in karaoke, all that stuff. Um, I just loved singing wherever people were, and uh, it's, I somehow turned that into a career, and uh, yeah, still doing it. Now, Greg, you have a very interesting angle to your testimony today because you grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to hear what that ongoing testimony was, particularly that you had to make that decision for yourself, even though you grew up in the church. Yeah, well, I think uh, like a lot of people like myself that grew up with, you know, in a Christian home, and it's just kind of um, your faith is just kind of part of the culture of, you know, where you live. and, and uh, uh, for me, it was something that was, you know, that I held very dear to my to my heart, and, and I, you know, kind of rode my parents' spiritual coattails for a lot of years. Um, not that it wasn't genuine; it really was. But I, I think when you're younger, it's it's easy to just, you know, not question anything and just, yeah, just go go along with everything. Um, and I think that as I got into my late teens and my twenties, I never really had a, I never had any time where I just kind of rebelled and went crazy and you know did anything. Um, ridiculous but I, I you know I definitely had those times in my heart where I you know you, you start doubting you start questioning you start sorting through that stuff and I think that's really healthy I think it's important to go through that stuff and to go through those times where you you know you look at your faith and and and, and you don't just just accept you know whatever you've been you've been told um, and so for me I think probably in my 20s that was where I really went through that process and and uh, and kind of step back and and really establish that you know, I want I want to have a relationship with God that's that's uh, based on my own beliefs and, and and I want to to really search him out for myself you know not just uh, not just have a regurgitated kind of faith um, so that's something that's that I'm st still ongoing that's something that I'm, I'm 26 now and uh, you know I love the Lord um, but I definitely don't have him figured out and I don't think I ever will <laughs> um, you know and uh, it's it's uh, Especially with these uncertain times, I mean, look at what's on the news. It's yes. it's really um, it, it, you have to have some faith. You have to have something to hold on to, and uh, I think that you know even with what's happening in Japan, I mean that to me is uh, we can't control that. We can control a lot of things as humans, but we can't control that. We we, we you know if if I uh, die today, it's the world's going to keep on moving, and I, I think um, knowing that I can trust in someone that's that has his hand, you know, has the whole world in his so hand. So that is it's, your focus, Greg. Yeah, that's, that's something that, that I, I cling to because there, what else do we have, really? You know, it all, it all What else it all do fades. we have? Well put. Now, you also exist with your musical talent and your musical performances in the church, mm -hmm. but in the secular domain as well. Yeah. Do you ever feel that pull, that um, tug of war within <laughs> you? You know, I, I think that no matter what you do, I think that you're always going to be... Um, tempted to, to do things for more money or more fame or whatever. And I think that's always there. And I think especially in the music industry, it's, it's kind of notorious for, for that. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, I, again, I think that, you know, life is so short for me to, to, um, to sing songs that don't mean anything, to, to, to do stuff that, you know, makes a quick buck that's going to last about five minutes. Um, and, and I want to live a life that's spent on things that are important, things that matter. And if that means singing a song of encouragement to someone or a song of hope, um, or singing a song that's just happy and makes someone feel good, I think that God can use that too in someone's now life. Now you are performing mm -hmm. this week. Tell us where. I'm performing at the Hughes Room in Toronto uh, on Thursday. It starts at 8 o'clock. And uh, you can get tickets in advance or at the door. And also at the Rivoli for Juno Fest on uh, the 25th. That is fantastic. I like your sense of focus.